Hi there. Wait, we're live. We're live. Yeah. Oh, we're live? We're live. You mean we're live? We're live. For real. Yeah. Hi there. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is this is us. You can see that right here. This is a cool thing we got for Christmas from our friends Ray and Amy Fernandez. I like yeah. to call them friends. They said they are. <laughs> it says, our life, our love, our music. Well, first of all, let me just say this. Say whatever you want. This is a podcast. We are starting to do podcasts. We are. On our YouTube channel. And we. this is episode one of the story of us. One. Episode one. Episode one. So today I thought that it would be a really cool thing to, to share with everyone how you and I began our journey together musically. She was my next door neighbor. That's so, how it all started. So that's what our podcast is going to be about today. <laughs> I was. I was the girl next door. She was the girl next door. Yes, she was. Yeah. Actually, in a way, that's kind of how it got started. Yeah. Uh, Dina was in a church band called Empty Vessels. We're allowed to say that, right? Yeah. Okay. We can say whatever we want? We can. <laughs> oh, and, it's going to be dangerous. It's no, going to be bad. I don't know about... Well, yeah, people swear on YouTube, so if, you know, if it... Do you swear? If it uh -huh. comes to you, let it go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> anyway, Dina was the, the girl next door who happened to play in a band in a Methodist church, and they needed a drummer. Dina heard that I played drums, and she said, would you like to audition? Am I missing something? No, that's right. Okay, well, you look funny. <laughs> okay. right, you heard that, right? Yes, that was yes, it. That's, that's, how, that. that's how it happened. That's how it happened. Yeah. Do, we, do you want to get into, into no, those? No, go ahead. Go okay. ahead. You're doing right. a great job. There's like a, a whole other story, okay. believe me. <laughs> but we're going to pick it up from there. So anyway, she said, would you like to audition? And I said, sure, I would like to audition. That sounds like fun. But I've never played contemporary Christian music before. Played just about everything else except hip-hop and rap and contemporary Christian music. I think those were the three that I never did. Yeah, and the band was really good, you guys. It they, was, they were amazing. How many harmony part harmony do we have? Like five or five. six? Five. I think five. It was yeah. so good. And, it really and, was. I mean, the songs that we did was like Christian rock material. It was just really, it was great. And there was a guy by the name of Brian Wachtel, who was the music director at the time, and he was really good. He played guitar, but he was just amazing at uh, giving people harmonies to do. Yes. And yeah. amazing even at, uh, like, drum parts, if he didn't like something that I was doing. Uh, you know, he would say, you know, try this or do that or whatever. But anyway. He had a good ear. They had a good band. Okay? Yeah. So I said... Sure, I'll audition. What do I need to bring? Do I need to bring my whole set? And Dina said, I don't know. So I went down with a snare drum. Figured that'd be enough. So I went down with the snare drum, and Brian was there. This is water, by the way, you guys. It's not vodka. Everybody always teases me that, I, you know, when I'm on stage, that the clear liquid I'm drinking is vodka. It is not. It's water. I really like to stay. I really like to stay hydrated, which is very important when you. When you sing. Would you say hi? Huh? You like to stay high? I didn't say that. Oh. Didn't she? She said hi, traded. Oh. I heard her. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. I missed uh, that. Ooh. Brian was there. You were there. Who else was there? Somebody else was there. Was it Julie or? Julie and her husband. And they were in the band I too. can't think of their last name right now and because it was a very long time ago. And our friend Donna was there. And uh, some guy, Ray. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Some guy Ray. So I guess the whole band. <laughs> not the Ray that not the Ray that gave us a sign though. No, not that Ray. <laughs> not that Ray. So it was the whole band. Yeah. Okay, so the whole band was there and uh ha, I didn't know any any contemporary Christian songs. I I I've heard of Michael W. Smith. I've heard of him and I've heard of the White Stripes and uh and that was about it. So anyway they said, Okay, we're gonna do we're gonna do a song. I said, Okay, what are you going to do? Not that it mattered, because I didn't know any Christian songs anyway. So anyway, they said, okay, we're going to do a song called, I don't know. And I said, okay. I said, you guys go ahead and uh, kick it off, and I'll just jump in. So they said, oh, all right. And they kicked it off, and I jumped in, 
and uh, we got through it pretty well, pretty quickly. Jimmy's always been able to, no matter what kind of music he is placed in, he is always able to be a good drummer at that particular style for whatever. I mean, he was thrown into a Christian band. He'd never played Christian rock before. Uh, he, at one point in time, a friend of ours asked if he would fill in for their dance band, and um, it was our friends from Elmo's Fire, and he... <laughs> Not only did he not have, know how to play dance music, because he'd never done it, uh, he never played with tracks either at the time. Right. So he had to learn not only how to play dance music and keep the beat with that, he also had to learn how to play with a track. So, But he's always able to do that. He's really good like that. So Lucky. Lucky, I guess. But thank you, baby. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, it went really well, and I put a smile on everybody's face, and I said, okay, let's do another one. And they did another one that was a little bit different than the first one, and we breezed through that pretty well. And uh, then we did another one, and uh, they said, that sounds good to me. Do you want to play with us? Uh, you know, so I said, okay. Yeah. So that's really how we got started as far as working together. Now, at this time, though, um, it, you know, there's like a whole lot to the story that we're not really going to share in the podcast because it... We'll say we weren't married at the time. Yeah, okay. it, yeah, because it doesn't... We were it, friends. It would honestly like be so lengthy to tell the entire story oh and it, it strays away from the music stuff that we really want to talk about and focus on. Um but we we were just really good friends at the time, and uh, you yeah. know, and and it was just really nice that we were able to play music together and get better acquainted that way in our friendship. So, uh, and then ultimately, obviously, later on down the road, um, Jimmy fell in love with me. <laughs> I did. How could you not? <laughs> and um, and um, I said yes. So yeah, she did. Uh, so anyway, we uh, we did that, and we played in empty vessels. I fell for... in love with him too. <laughs> Thank goodness, huh? <laughs> we did that for a couple of years. Yeah, a few years. I guess a few years, mm -hmm. and we played in a church band. Now I had acoustic drums, and the place where we played originally was the basement. Yeah, it was. Um, I'm trying to think, like not a mess hall, but it was like their their cafeteria. I... <sighs> I forget what they call it. it. You know, it's just like a room, a community room, basically, where they would hold different events and stuff. And there was a stage. It kind of was set up like a cafeteria in an elementary school where there was a stage. It was off the, the ground level. And there was like a, a, you know, an overhang over top of the stage that was built. And then there was like a little kitchen on the side. So it was really like a cafeteria kind of style. And at the time, it was my church, and we also hosted things there for kids that we called Gideon's Cafe, and monthly we invited different musicians to come in and, and play music and had pizza and things like that for the kids. So it was like a community mess hall kind of room at the church, and that's where we practiced, but it was very, very loud with Jimmy's acoustic drums. It was. Very loud, and... Everybody was a little concerned with that, so um, our church bought him a pair of, a set yeah. of drums. They didn't buy me. Well, they didn't buy it specifically for Jimmy. I wish they would. They bought it for the church, but nobody else was playing in a band at the church other than Empty Vessels, so Jimmy got to use the electronic drum set that was gifted to the church by the church with with the money that was tithed from the church so it was really really nice and um it was actually his first experience with electronic, electronic drums. drums yes it was you know um and then he put that aside for many many years until recently and he now owns his own set of electronic, of electronic drums. drums of which Same we company. we for the most part will be using i can't imagine he does oh, have a nice. small a nice. small acoustic kit that he uses with the band that we have outside of our duo our hat trick um band are you getting confused yet i know it's very confusing but i doubt he's going to be using his small acoustic kit because the stuff that we're doing really calls for electronic drums so um fortunately we have that availability and we're going to be using that but more to the story. So getting back to Empty we Vessels. Were. we were at Empty Vessels, and 
Uh, we were in that together for a couple years, and um, and then I stepped down, and Jimmy came with me. I did. Uh, yes, uh, that was kind of a, a goofy scene as well for Christians. So, and I say that with a smile on my face, Christians. Yeah, it was. We love everybody. So anyway, uh, a long time ago, back in 1990, a friend of mine, Bill Watson, played guitar. And Bill and I got together and said, hey, why don't we start a band? Because Bill was very experienced, and he and I had played a couple times together, and it went really well. And I was kind of experienced, and we decided to put a band together and make it a country band. This was in 1990. So we looked around, and... Um, Oh, I'm t yeah, okay, so we looked around, we, we got the people together. Okay, no, wait, so this, I just need to interrupt, because I know he said the time frame, but he's, like, going way back before Empty Vessels, before he even met me, when he joined this band and, and started this new band. He didn't join it, he joined it together with all these people. It was Jimmy's band. It was my band. And Bill Watson and I started it. Right. right. And it was actually the original OG Sidewinder band. I wish I had the picture. Uh, you know what? I think there's a picture on the fridge of the the logo that you guys. Is that's, that still there? Well, that's the lo yeah, the logo. Yeah, the logo. That's still there. The old country uh, logo. He's going to go get it. <laughs> we still have a huge sign that was hand-painted by one of the girls that was in the band Rhonda. at one point in time. But this is, this was the original OG. That's the original Sidewinder logo with the cowboy hat, and I'm horrible at this. There you go, it's in frame. Yeah. So anyway, that was the original logo that we had whenever we played. Uh, we got, there, were, there was a bass player that was a female, um, Bill Julie. Watson and me. What's her name? Julie. Or? Julie. 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 What's the guy's name on Cheers? Norm Peterson. Peterson. Right. So her name was Julie Peterson. That's how I always remember her last name. Oh. Because his name was Norm Peterson. Okay. Coincidentally. So we get uh, Julie in the band. I don't even know how we met her, to be honest with you. Uh, and she was good. And she did vocals. And she was a good player. And I never knew any of these people because I didn't know Jimmy at this point in time. Very tall. She's about, I don't know, 5'10", 5'11", maybe. So we, we did that, and then uh, Bill says, hey, I know this guy named Donnie Plum. And he's about 16 years old or something like that. He's a young guy, but he's an amazing singer, and he's, he could sound just like Elvis. So we figured we could put that together, incorporate that with the country thing, if he could do Elvis. So we said, okay. So we got him in a band. We started practicing, started putting things together. And Bill went out one night and got drunk at a karaoke bar. And he heard this girl sing. And he goes, oh, man, you got to hear this girl, Rhonda Watson. She's really good. And while Jimmy was formulating a band and going out and doing gigs, I was a young mommy. I didn't know her at the time. <laughs> we didn't know each other then. At it all. was in the 90s. I was a, a young mommy with my first... Uh, first two children in the 90s. Yes. So, uh, we put this band together, and, and Rhonda ends up being in the band, and ended up being Bill's girlfriend. <laughs> okay, well, now, let me just stop you for one moment. This story could take forever, and it we could, could make this podcast we really, really to. long, so I'm trying to direct Jimmy a little bit, because this is is really not about Sidewinder. This is about this is us. us. So, But there are so many good stories. Yes. There and, are so and, many good oh, stories. But let me mention, okay, so we are oh doing gosh. we are doing a podcast. Um, <laughs> we're hoping to do, I don't know, once a week maybe. Okay. So we're hoping to do a podcast once a week. And um, we're going to put these podcasts out on our YouTube channel. Ultimately, we would like to do exclusive podcasts on our fan club page on Patreon. And that's where we'll tell the stories. Yeah, that's where we'll tell, like, the in-deep stories. <laughs> so if you're interested in joining our Patreon page... It could be a book, believe me. ...and becoming a member, we will include the link below, and you can sign up for our podcast here. Below. And, yeah, and... Um, this is like being a weatherman. Everything's backwards. And I think... 
I think our podcast here um, is five dollars a month. So that's honestly, you guys, that's less than a cup of coffee a day. If you you know go to a coffee shop, Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks or something, um, you'd pay. You know, if you pay five dollars a month for something, that is less than what you're going to pay getting a cup of coffee every day while you're out and about. So consider joining if you'd like to hear the nitty gritty of the stories behind the stories. But in the meantime, uh, we will be posting on our YouTube channel too, which is out there for everyone. And please share that channel because we're trying to build, we're trying to grow. We're trying. And you'll help us with our journey. And please. in the meantime, it's a win win because you get to hear our stories. <laughs> They're good stories. So, yeah. So, anyways. Good stories. All right. We'll, we'll fast. We'll fat. We'll, yeah. We'll fast, we'll fast forward. forward. Jimmy, Jimmy gets a little nervous because. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm not nervous. Here's, here's the thing. About? Well, I want to say this too. Okay? I've been going radio for 50 years. I was just going to say nervous. that. Nervous about what? He's not nervous. He does a great job speaking, but as far as looking into the camera, this is where he and I differ a little bit. And, and I'll tell this story, interjecting it quickly before we get back. Because right, we'll see how quick. Go this ahead, is, go. This is important. And see, you're making it more like a video now than a podcast by by <laughs> your actions. I, I'm, I'm listening to you. I don't want to interrupt Anyhow, you. Anyhow, I am not I a radio person too. at all. Um, however, I've had a YouTube channel for many, many years. And so I'm very used to looking into the camera face forward and speaking to everyone out there as if they're sitting in front of me. But with Jimmy, he's always behind the drum kit or he's always behind the microphone at work. And so he never, you know, is looking into the camera, speaking to people and looking at himself as it's coming back, you know, through the camera that he can see himself through the viewfinder. So it's a little different for him. It's really not different for me. But anyways, he's doing a great job. Go ahead. Again, I forgot where I was. Keep interrupting me. Sidewinder, Bill Watson. All right, we're going to fast forward. Okay, so anyway, uh, some things happened in a band that I wasn't particularly pleased with, and so I left the band. Uh, I, the last job I played was The Hideaway. I remember the night uh, quite well. And I left, and they got another drummer, and they continued the, the band at that time I got a full time job at Y108. You finished the gig though, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I got a job at Y108 in Pittsburgh, PA, and I was working there and uh, doing very well. You know, I was doing okay. And so, anyway, we did that. I did that for a while. And then one day I was on my living room couch and there was a knock at the door, right? I don't remember that, but I was just going to say I don't that think you were there. in the meantime, I thought it was a phone call. But no. in, in the meantime, though, the Jimmy and I had been involved in empty vessels together prior to what he's just going to tell you. Are you going to tell the story where they talked about the band getting together again? Well, the band was all the band was pretty much together the entire time I was gone. Oh, with you. Without me, okay. They had another drummer, right? So their drummer was leaving, and when their drummer was leaving, they needed another drummer. Well, Donnie Plum was still in the band. Bill Watson moved to Nashville to become rich and famous, and he's pretty much accomplished that. He's a very well-known engineer down there with a recording studio, excellent guitar player, and Donnie said, "Hey." Uh, I want to know if you want to be in a band and, and play drums. I said, what band? He said, Sidewinder. He said, you know, I kept it together, Bill kept it together, we kept it together all these years. Um, I said, well, they, I don't know if I could play with everybody. And he said, well, Bill's no longer in the band. He moved to Nashville. Rhonda's no longer in the band because she was in Germany, I think, doing something, and her and Bill got divorced. And Donnie was playing with a guitar player and uh, a drummer, but the drummer was leaving, and I think Who at that the time I don't remember. Okay. It might have been uh, the guy that would go out of Beaver County. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, Frank. 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 It was. I think it was Frank. Yeah. Frank. I forget what his last name was. Matt. Oh. Mead. Or right, we'll, we'll say yeah. Frank Mead. That was a stage name. Yeah, he didn't like leaving Beaver County. No, he didn't. Yeah, he probably he's... still doesn't. So anyway. He I, was a nice. Really nice I can't guy, remember though. if we were dating. If he's watching this. at that time or not, he is a nice guy. Yeah. Were we dating at that time? We were dating. Were we living together? I no, definitely not. No, we weren't living together, but we were dating. I think we were dating at this point in time, 
And Donnie says, uh, you know, he came, he came in uh, and he said, you know, do you want to be in the band? And I said, well, I said, I'll tell you what, I've, I've got a girlfriend and she sings. And if we could get a band together, I would like her to sing a few songs because she's really, really good. And he goes, well, if you say so, I believe you. He said, okay. He said, you know, we'll, we'll do that. And I said, great, let's, uh, let's get back together. So we did. Uh, we started playing. Dina came in and she learned about seven songs to begin with, I think. Yeah, at this point in time, I was not the lead singer of the Sidewinder band. Donnie, Donnie was. was the lead singer, and he was an amazing singer. And I have to say that I harmonized with him, and so, you know, I did most of the harmony. And then I did a few. I did all the harmony with him. And then, unless there wasn't harmony in the song, um, and when there wasn't, because I don't play an instrument, I played my tambourine. So I did that. Um, but uh, nothing. But um, I forgot what I was going to say now. Something too. about my tambourine. Oh. <laughs> Your Can tambourine. We, let's keep it clean. Somebody's tambourine. Yeah. So, anyways. Um, <laughs> Uh, I did do a few lead songs, but at the time, well, first of all, getting back to Donnie's, Donnie's singing with my harmonizing, we had an ability to really sing well together. There's not too many people that can sing well together. Like, anybody can sing with someone else, but it's very magical when somebody is able to really harmonize well with another person to the point where it's right on pitch and you know right on key and it's the exact harmony that it needs to be and you don't always find that with everyone I had that with Donnie and then moving forward in the band um, we had another another guy that we played with which we'll probably mention in a little bit that that same magic happened where we harmonized really really well together in fact even better than Donnie and I, um, because he was the other guy, which I don't want to mention the name yet because I know we're going to get to it. He actually was a great musical director as well. So because he had a good ear and he was very mindful of my style, at that point in time when I was working with him, I was the lead singer and he did a few lead songs. So he knew like all of my inflections and things like that. He knew exactly where I was going with the tune and everything. It was really cool, this other guy. But anyhow, back to Donnie. So um, I was harmonizing in the band, and the interesting thing that I think is really important to share with everyone is that at the time that I got involved with Sidewinder in the beginning, even though I had played in Empty Vessels, but again, I only had a couple of lead songs in Empty Vessels, the whole idea with Empty Vessels with my position was harmony. And Brian Wachtel picked out all the harmonies for everyone. At that time with Empty Vessels, Julie was the lead singer of the band. And the other girls, myself and Donna, we got to sing a couple of leads. So when I became involved with Sidewinder, and it's so weird even thinking about this now because it's not like this now for me at all. I, back then, was so nervous. Like, I used to get nervous before I would have to start singing. And my throat would close up, and I would just get, like, really... I can't even describe it. It was I'd get butterflies in my stomach, and I was always concerned, like, oh, my God, am, you know, am I going to sound good? Is it going to come out right? Am I going to remember my words? I mean, my head was... Like, I was literally beating myself up every single time that I had to sing lead. When it came to harmony, no problem. I loved it. I was good at it with Donnie, and it was fine. But it's so strange because, well, it's not strange. It just comes with experience. Like, now, I never get nervous. I get anxious, and I there's a difference, and I'd like to talk about that as well. There's a difference between getting nervous and anxious. You know, when you get anxious about something, with me anyways, it's like, I just want to hurry up and get started. Like, I want the night to start happening, and I want to get up there, and I want to perform, and I want to bring it, you know. Um, so there's no more getting nervous anymore. But anyhow, so we're doing this gig with Donnie in Sidewinder. My turn? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so we were doing gigs with Donnie in Sidewinder. 
Uh, and Dean has started doing more and more songs and doing them quite well. Actually, I'll tell you what, we, we had a nice mix of two very good lead singers that could harmonize. I mean, yeah. Dina's and Donnie's, they were both excellent. Now, Donnie also played bass. Uh, you know, he wasn't, uh, he, was, he was an okay bass player. And uh, we started booking jobs and started playing a lot. You might you know, be we watching really did. I, Hi, Donnie. <laughs> how you doing? Hi, Donnie. Hi, Donnie. So anyway, uh, we started playing, and uh, we were playing all over the area, Pittsburgh area, Beaver County area. And uh, that went off for, I don't know, a few years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it went off for a few years, and um, I think it ended up that Donnie started playing with another band. And they started playing like more classic rock and things of that nature. And I didn't know really what was going on. And it got to the point where when I booked Sidewinder, I had to check with Donnie to see if he was playing with this other band. Because if he was playing with the other band, then I couldn't book right. Sidewinder. Right, so that made it hard because it was like he was really enjoying the other music that he was doing with his other band as well. We were country at the time. And so he was getting involved in some other style of music and having a good time. Which is fine. Yeah, and so it, it became very difficult to book because um, Jimmy was always in control of being able to book whenever, and we would just do the job because nobody else had any other commitments. But then when somebody else in a band has another commitment, it makes it difficult, which is why, you know, getting back to what we're doing with us, because it makes it so simple because Jimmy and I are married. We know each other's agenda. We know each other's schedule. Um, we know the style of music that we both like and what we're both really able to shine with. And so it just makes things a lot easier in choosing music, booking dates, and all of that type of thing. So it came down to, I booked a, a couple of jobs and Donnie said, well, I can't book them. I can't play them because I have a booking with this other band. And we were getting set up to play at the time. And that didn't sit real well with me. So I, I called him aside and I said, look, Donnie, I said, this, this just isn't working out. I said, you're in this other band. I said, I'm, I'm trying to book jobs, you know, because we like to play. And you're kind of hindering what we do. I said, I don't care if you play with another band. You can play with as many bands as you want as long as it doesn't interfere with our band. And that makes it hard, though. It, it really does. It does. You know, it, it makes it difficult when you have members in the band that are in another band because, you know, you don't want to cramp anybody else's, you know, journey. Uh and, and they're enjoying playing music, but it does make it really difficult when you are trying to book a job and not knowing if that person is booked. It's like you have to you have to get on the phone to call all the members in the band and say, are you available? Where when you know that there's no other commitments, even though it's still difficult with other people in a band, because everybody has personal agendas as well, you pretty much know okay, we're all available on the weekends, I'm going on vacation on such and such, or I have an appointment on such and such, so I'm not available. But you know people's availability, so you can just go ahead and book a job. But when there's other people that have other bands that they're involved in, it doesn't always work out so easily. And, and the other problem with having people in other bands is they go to the places where you play and they try to get bookings there. That too, yeah. So it uh, it gets kind of complicated. So yeah. if you're watching this and you're thinking about being in a band or you played for a while and you have a band and you're putting another band together, just keep it in mind, you know, that it, it's good to have everybody in a primary band and if uh, and, and to have a schedule. It finally got to the point where Donnie would give us his schedule, mm -hmm. but then his schedule started filling up a little bit, especially in certain weeks, and then I couldn't book anything. So getting back to, we're playing we're playing this club this one night, and uh, I told him that, you know, we had an opportunity to do a gig. He says, I can't do it. I'm playing with the other band. And um, 
Oh, I remember. That was at the Eagles. Yes, it was. And they wanted to rebook us. And, uh, you know, and Donnie was there with us that night. So you were able to go up to him and say, hey, they want to rebook us on such and such a night. And he said he hadn't given us his schedule yet for that particular, like they wanted to book us the next month. Um, and so he hadn't given us his schedule yet. And he had already been booked with his other band. So we were kind of like bummed because we really enjoyed playing there. We had a huge following we did. at this particular Eagles club. And, um, you know, we couldn't take the gig because he was involved that night with his other band. It was unavailable. Yeah, and, and again, so, I mean, it, you know, it's like, you can't get angry about it. It's just, it's disappointing. Sure, you know? it happens. And, and at the time, though, we were both working, Jimmy and I were working full-time jobs. So, technically speaking, it was more just disappointing, like, oh, because we love playing. Like, okay, we're not going to get to play that night. You know, it's okay because they like us. They'll hire us back on another night. No worries. But now we're at the point where, you know, like this is what we do for a living. So, therefore, if a situation like that would, were to happen, then it's just, it's not disappointing. It's not only disappointing, shall I say. It's frustrating because, you know, you're trying to make money and this is what you do for a living. So, um, it makes it hard, for, as Jimmy was saying, if you're considering joining a couple of bands and just like being that kind of a musician where, you know, you're not like committed to one specific band. Just keep that in mind because one of the bands that you're playing with might be committed to their band exclusively. And that might be their way of making money for their living. Whereas if you're a traveling kind of musician, you know, you're cool with getting a job wherever you can or, you know, in your other band but then that could hinder the band that you started with. So just things to think about. So anyway, I pulled Donnie aside and I said, you know, could you play this date? And he goes, no, I'm playing with uh, this other band. And I said, you know what, man, this isn't working. You know, I, I said, you, I, I, I don't have a problem with you playing with another band. I told you that before, but it needs to be on nights that we're not playing. Now, I understand we didn't have a booking that night, but... If it's with you first come, first serve, um, I don't think it's going to work out because there will be times like this where we're not going to be able to book, and that means Dina and I aren't playing, and the guitar player. And I, I said, you know, you're going to have to choose. And if you choose the other band, that's fine with me. As a matter of fact, I would prefer it if you chose the other band. And there's a reason for that. Dina started getting a lot of recognition, and um, that'll be a story we'll put on our Patreon page. <laughs> it's one for that. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. So anyway, Donnie says, well, I really like playing with you guys. I, I think I'd rather play with you. And I said, you know what? Think about it. But um, as far as I'm concerned, you should go play with the other band. Uh, this just isn't working. So he thought about it. We talked the next day, and he goes, well, I really like playing with you and Dina, then the guitar player and I said that's great Donnie but you know it, it's just not working man I, I think you need to go with this other this other band you he seem was, to like them yeah he was struggling I mean I he think, was I think he mentioned and I could be wrong if he's you know if he's watching and you know he has something to say about it then you know then you can talk to us about it and let us know that I'm wrong but <laughs> <laughs> I really feel that he was struggling with his decision because he liked playing with us, and I think he was being genuine. Oh, I did too. But he really, I mean, you could tell, he really enjoyed, it was like he had played country music for so long because the Sidewinder band started all those years ago in the 90s as a country band, and here we were into the 2000s, early 2000s. Yeah, I guess that's right. And, you know, I think he was just looking or needing a change, and, and I get that, you know, so... It was that a struggle happens. for him to make that decision, so he ended up going with the other band. And so, yeah, he, yeah. Long story short, uh, yeah, he went with the other band. And at that point in time, I was glad, you know. And that's the story of Sidewinder, part one, episode one, up until this point. And I guess we can probably pick it up from there because we've already been going about forty minutes. We yeah. have. So. Let me see. There should be a timer on here. No, 28 minutes. 
Well, I, I think I like the half hour of time. Plus, that's pretty much the end of that chapter anyway. Okay. Isn't well, it? Well, we were going to talk about how... Well, yeah. We there were, are a lot of things we can talk about. There's a lot of stories. So. But we're trying to get to This Is Us. So because we're trying to get to This Is Us, I mean... Yeah, I mean, if, if you Half like, hour increments, I think, are good. Okay. I, I don't know anything about this... What, what's this called? Podcast. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dina does them all the time. She watches all the time. And I'm like, how can people watch for 40 minutes? People they don't even know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, get into that. I, I just can't comprehend it. Like, I don't know if there's people that are really going to watch 30 minutes or 35 by the time we get done. Uh, and if you do, bless you. Well, the podcasts are And if you like don't, then, you know, well, well, you know, I understand. The podcasts are kind of like in video world called vlogs where instead of a blog where a blog is like when you're actually typing on the internet on a, a specific site and I have a blog too personally but um, a vlog is where you do like a video chat chit chat about something that you want to document so that's basically what we're doing which is really today like a podcast is a lot of podcasters just do audio, um, but there are also a lot of them that do audio and video. And we've decided, even though Jimmy loves doing audio, obviously because he's radio guy, we decided together as us um, that we wanted to do a podcast with video and audio. So together. So that's what we're doing. But you're right. So I think what we'll do is we'll wrap this episode up, episode one. And um, we'll pick it up next time where, so we left off with, and I'm going to have to make a note on paper, Donnie. where Donnie left the band. Um, but I would like to say thank you so much you. for being here with us on our YouTube channel. Hit it is the bell a, wherever it is, the subscribe yeah, bell. Yeah, it is a right. new channel. It's Us Because. Down there, I think. Um, I'm new to this, I don't know. It's over here. Well, yeah. Where it's over there? I thought it was over here. I don't know. You know what? When you're looking at your <laughs> screen, it's on the right-hand side, okay? <laughs> when you're looking at your screen. Yeah. If you're away from your screen, it's on your left. But, you know, you anyway, will be like... Anyway, subscribe. Yeah. So, it'll be, it'll subscribe. We've got some good stories coming up. Please subscribe to our channel. Uh, hit the little bell as well so that you don't miss a single episode whenever we post. And also, if you wouldn't mind sharing our channel with your friends, family, and followers whom you think might be interested in the kind of content that we're going to be putting out on this page uh, or that might want to hear our, our little stories. So we appreciate you and we will leave the link below to our Patreon page. We already have a few things on there. We have some what we're calling podcasts where we just have the audio of some gigs that we have done with specific songs. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, so there's, there's a few little tidbits on that page and you know you can help us growing there with us as well by joining us on Patreon. So We also have a Facebook page. We do, Us Because Facebook. If you would join that, we would appreciate it. Right now, it's we haven't really been pushing it too much. We've got about 300 followers, I think. Something somewhere like that, it. yeah. But if we could get up to 3,000, that would be a whole lot better. Yeah. It would take a while to do that. Well, the goal is, you guys, and I want to put this out there too, not so that you feel sorry for us, but... <laughs> So that you understand what we're doing. Uh, Jimmy and I have chosen to do music for our living, um, where we're at in our lives right now. And um, it's not for everyone because it's definitely, because, us, because, because it's definitely a struggle at times, specifically now because we're in the middle of a pandemic and uh, a lot of places are shut down and we have not been able to perform or play. And in fact, when a year now. we started this idea of doing, I know the podcast is going longer than we thought, but this is important to say. Um, when we started this idea that we were going to do this duo, um, we invested in our equipment, we invested in the, um, the songs that we were going to do, and um, then the pandemic hit. So just in time. Yeah, and in addition to that, we're caretakers to his mom. So there's been a lot going on, 
and uh, we haven't really been able to get out there and roll publicly yet. So our public displays have been in what we call the living room lounge here at our cottage. So that's what we've been doing. And uh, at, at some point in time in the year 2021, as the pandemic calms down a little bit, uh, we're looking forward to getting out there and performing for you live in person. Um, at some local clubs and restaurants. And we're hoping to do a little bit more upscale kind of thing, almost like a jazzy dinner hour kind of music situation. Yes. Yeah. More of um, not like what we were doing in Sidewinder or even in Hat Trick where it's like, you know, dancing and things like that. We still be dancing involved, but we're going to be more of like a... Um, like a listening kind of thing during dinner hour or happy hour, cocktail hour, and then after that perhaps, um, you know, some slow dancing kind of things for people that just want to uh, to enjoy their time together on a date. You want a kind belly of rub. Yeah, that kind of thing. We're, we're not going to be doing like hard rock and roll like we do with, not hard rock, but we're not going to be doing like, you know, rock and roll like we do with hat trick or... Um, <laughs> you know, or what we did in Sidewinder. It's going to be a lot different. Smooth. Yeah. So anyways, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you being here, and we love you so much for um, just hanging out with us and being curious about what it is that we're up to. So thank you. So when are we going to do these podcasts, vlogs, or whatever they're called? Well, we should probably pick a day where... You know, it, it's kind of consistent. And what is today? Is today Wednesday? No, today's Tuesday. Wednesday. Tuesday. Wednesday. Wait a minute. Tuesday. No, today's Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Just because I worked yesterday. Do you want to? Do you want to? I don't know. Do you guys have any suggestions? Why don't you give us your suggestion of what would be a good day? But I guess they can watch it anytime, right? Yeah, so, you can watch it anytime, really, because, you know, it's going to be on YouTube and it's going to be permanent. But so it doesn't we, matter. It doesn't really matter for you. But weekly, Jimmy and I, we haven't really uh, decided yet, but Tuesday might be a good day for us. I don't know. I mean, we can be very flexible. But the goal is, you guys, look for a video podcast of ours once a week is what our goal is. Once a week. Um, you know, and we're hoping to make that happen. We do have some extracurricular activity going on because we're caretakers with his mom and so there might be times that we might have to stray from doing the specific night that we picked uh, and do a different night so basically that's why it's important to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell as well hit the bell so that you are well. notified every time um, we post on YouTube and the other thing that I just recently discovered from YouTube. I feel like I have a hair stuck to my, my lip. You're right. Um, Did you borrow my razor? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, oh, you mean like a loose hair? Yeah, like I feel like it was stuck to my okay, I don't see anything. lipstick or something. But anyways, uh, I, I think what YouTube is doing right now, you used to get a notification in your email but I don't think that's happening right now. I think what's happening is, you know, you have like a YouTube homepage, kind of like you do on any platform, and there will be a red dot next to any of the people you subscribe to that have recently post, have posted. So, um, that have, have a recent post or recently posted. So, just be on the lookout for that, and um, we'll see you soon in our next podcast. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Stay safe. And hopefully we'll be out playing soon and you'll be able to come and hear us or we can post some things on Facebook and here on YouTube, okay? Yeah. Take so, care. Bye. Good night. <laughs>